Man, rainy days are so boring. Well, Dave, you could play a board game. <sighs> I played all those yesterday. I want something else. Well, old boy, you could listen to some records on the hi-fi. Hi-fi? More like lo-fi. I want something fun! Oh, fun, dear boy. Why don't you look at some uh, Viewmaster reels from back in time? Uh, I looked at those a hundred times already. I want something else. Ah. Well then. Perhaps we should be watching a movie. A movie for Raiders of the Lost Genre. Dave? God damn it. Since the earliest days of movie making, the genre of the Lost World and its prehistoric denizens is one that always seems to die out, only to be rediscovered once again. From B-movies and cult films to modern blockbusters, we are the Raiders of the Lost Genre. Hey, Dave. Hey, man, what's up? I'm glad to welcome you to our show, Raiders of the Lost Genre. Why am I speaking in an old-timey 1950s announcer-type voice? Because you took some pills you found in the street! Why, how'd you get- No, that's not true! It's because we're watching The Black Scorpion right. from the 1950s! Okay. Yes, uh, I'm looking for a year. I don't- Anyway, it's- It's- It's from- 1957! That year! That I just said. 1950-something! That's the one! So, yes, uh, this is uh, The Black Scorpion. Uh, with, uh, among others, 1950s uh, B scream queen Mara Corday, who, yeah, and uh, it has uh, visual effects by the world famous, well, overseen by the world famous Willis O'Brien, who did the original 1933. Right, Kong, he, so. he is a reestablished character over and over on this show, so it's nice to see him back. Yeah, that's right. It's great to be back, Dave. So it's it's like obviously black and white. We're looking at giant monster run amok. Essentially, yes. Um, it, it is a prehistoric beast released by released. volcanic released by volcanic activity from the east, from the bowels of the earth, <laughs> from the bowels. Uh, so here's my the only question I ever have when it comes to giant monster movies: sure, colorized, black and white, no matter what. Right? Can it trump giant grasshoppers and Peter Graves? Nothing trumps Peter Graves, but it does trump. Giant grasshoppers. I, I will admit it does that. It's not as good as giant ants, but it is better than giant grasshoppers. But the the graves of it all. Uh -huh. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Boring. <laughs> Starts with explosions. What do you want? <laughs> Terrified and helpless as a new volcano is created by the mysterious and rebellious forces of nature. Ooh, those rebellious forces. Don't you hate it when the earth rebels against humanity? Yeah, I tell them again and again. Mystery Science Theater 3000 is one of my favorite TV shows over the years with its unique way of riffing bad movies. Black Scorpion is better than a lot of the fare that the series has tackled over the decades, but it's still just a 1957 monster schlock flick underneath it all. Yeah. But it's got some interesting talent involved that makes it stronger than much of the irradiated monster and giant insect pictures that were the rage at the drive-ins at the time. Oh. Supervisor of special effects Willis O'Brien. Doesn't mean he really did all of them. If he just name, supervised them. If your last name is Peterson, let's go easy on the first name being Peter, right? I'm not certain MST3K was my introduction to Black Scorpion, but in any case, the unfiltered version has a special place in my DVD library. Whoa! Oh shit! Titles came out of the lava! Edward Ludwig directed this film. Von Directhoven. <laughs> a volcano explodes into being not far from Mexico City, 
and geologists Hank Scott and Arturo Ramos arrive near the village of San Lorenzo to investigate. The telephone lines are down since the earthquake. Thanks a lot. See you later. I hope that this guy's also a... He's a mystic. Cursed! <laughs> right, back to it. <laughs> Take it easy. That's not the only thing that's being telephoned in on this movie. Hello, do you read me? 511, I read you, Sergeant Vega. Is that, isn't that the, the voice of Robot from yeah. Lost in Space? Robot does not understand why you do not have Sergeant Vega with you. Danger, danger! They find a smashed police car near a wrecked house, but none of this destruction seems to have been caused by the eruption. Look out, Dave. You know what's more dangerous than a giant scorpion? A regular-sized rattlesnake? Worse. A small rattlesnake? Close. You gotta beware of baby rattlers! <laughs> pow, pow, pow. <laughs> that rattlesnake is the worst kind of them all. <laughs> oh, it's an abandoned child. Isn't that quaint? Gun control by Ed Wood again. Yeah. They also find a baby alone in the house, and the cop dead of apparent fright. He died doing what he loved, hiding from work. <laughs> Taking the child to the village, they learn of more damage and missing livestock from Father Delgado. And this isn't the first time? It's a pretty swanky house you have here in this dirt-poor village, Padre. Ravaged as by some giant bean. This guy was cosplaying as Neo for four <laughs> The locals believe a demon is the cause, though the scientists laugh and continue on to research the volcano. So? So? Ah, si, si, senor. Here, have a look. Even scientists like to boink. <laughs> Now I see him. And it's a very handsome horse, and I'd like to get started, Hank. Oh. I don't know why you're sexually attracted to a horse. <laughs> I mean, what is it with you Americans? <laughs> Nearby, they find the beautiful rancher Teresa Alvarez thrown from her horse, and Arturo finds obsidian rock amongst the lava. Oh, these are rocks, all right. More rocks, rocks, some rocks, hey, dirt. He's a scientist. He knows the special rock. I don't know what's gotten into my volcanoes at Miraflores. Please, please. Gary? <laughs> please. This is a laboratory? This is a scientist. One question, Doctor. I hope I can answer it. The alcohol, the distilled water, the... And this distilled water. And in this, Corona Light. Tequila. I can understand that. But what's the tequila for? Well, uh... In your country, I believe you call it uh, coffee break. I might be writing this movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At Teresa's ranch, Arturo tries to open the rock while Hank tries to open Teresa. I make a complaint, Teresa? Oh, I'm sorry. She knows how to play pool, though. And she's got a great see rack. Hold it up against the light. Yeah, I see it back there. <laughs> The obsidian at least yields the impossible, a small scorpion that has survived the heat and centuries trapped inside the rock. Alive! Oh, hey, look, it has a seam! And it's alive! And it's a mouse! I can't believe it. Life enduring for centuries like this? And under all that heat? Hank, those volcanoes have been there for hundreds of years. Maybe even more. I'm sure they You know, I could throw this scorpion out the window, and then we'd really be alone. It's simpler than that. Why don't we go outside? Why don't we? And then I tell you to leave. Sorry, I'm embarrassed to fuck in front of arachnids. <laughs> <laughs> About that time, Ma Bell rings to let Teresa know the local phone lines are working again, only for the call to be the harbinger of doom. <laughs> oh, oh that's... You know, it's hard to walk away from that. I was worried that it would not be worth the wait. The telephone workers can be heard dying, attacked by a gigantic scorpion. No! Ugh. Yeah, I think you need to burn, like, the whole country down now. Hey, come here! Listen to this! Listen! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh no! <laughs> hey, blood! 
Might be chocolate syrup. You might have been having chocolate milk. Well, you Boom. were complaining about the complete lack of blood before, and there it is. So. It's good. It's good. The cattle are also stirred up, and the ranchers and heroes flee in terror from one more of the giants. The crying. The crying of the cows. The silence of the cows. <laughs> Fortunately, the creatures only roam at night, so the next day, the geologists and the army try to find the point of origin of this creature feature. Ew. Where is the scorpion getting so much mucus? Bad allergies. A frog in a jar. This specimen found by Dr. Ramos is of a species thought to be extinct as a Triasian era. Try what? Triasian? Triasian? That's not an era. They find it in the form of a huge fissure near the volcano that one of the explorers falls into. It is a giant hole in the ground. Oh, there he goes. I think you did write this. Hank and Arturo use a crane to lower down and investigate. Why did you do that? Maybe I just wanted to see what you'd do. You can help us if you will keep the log of the descent. How many meters down? Keep yourself busy. That's my theory. Secretarial work. Oh, and uh, don't forget to take care of a little one either. Hey, maybe a little coffee there, sweet chicks. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, sugar tits. Finding a subterranean tunnel system left over from millions of years ago still full of enormous, disgusting bugs that have survived the heat in the dark. Sure is hot down here, over. Well, the birds seem all right. Yeah. That's one of the Dark Lords from Howard the Duck. <laughs> Oh, whoa. Yeah, that's bad. Right. Conga line of scorpions. Jeez. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, yeah, try the gun. That always works. I mean, you're pretty much fucked, so do whatever you want at this point, right? <laughs> it doesn't even penetrate it. What? Maybe try asking it out to dinner first. <laughs> yeah. The giant scorpions fight other creatures and destroy the crane cage. Oh, damn! Fight, fight! Yeah! This one is pretty big. That's how they kill each other, that weak spot in the throat. Right in the solar plexus. Fortunately, local boy Juanito, who had stowed away, by that time had started looking for his American friend, though he is nearly devoured by a trapdoor spider instead. Round. Do you ever hear of a trapdoor spider? You have now. Interesting use of effects here. Oh yeah. Saved by the geologists, they all witness a stupendous black scorpion tower over the others and begin to eat those that stand in its way. Those are cage gas tanks, everything. But why? Why does the scorpion care? Do they hate rectangles? Don't you? Triangle Man is where it's at. Our heroes barely escape the pit with their lives, and the army uses dynamite to close the fissure, hopefully sealing off the Lost World's monsters. Let it go! Guess that does it. Quiet times, I guess once so this isn't the end of the movie? No. What? Well, a plane, yeah, sure, that would help a lot. <laughs> oh, uh, even if we do have what? A day, two days? I don't want to settle for just two days, Hank. <laughs> Maybe three, but not two. Right now. Denied. <laughs> All seems well, so Hank tries to romance Teresa, and the village tries to recover. Dr. Scott? Yes. I am Victor Steven. Right away, but... Dave, you need a hat like that. I might. I meant the one she was wearing. Oh, I know. But the Mexican army finds a dead scorpion and calls our protagonists back in the hopes of defeating the monsters before they can emerge. There it is. Gentlemen. A University of Matt painting. <laughs> yes, I've heard it. Of course there's always a possible danger again. 
I'm in charge of an aerial mapping project for our government. Whose government? You don't even have an accent! I was born in Mexico City. Now, please, if you'll take a look at this graph, I work for Whoa, the government. Golly! <laughs> Gomero Pyle. <laughs> Hank, what's the meeting on Friday about? Nothing, nothing. Scorpions, nothing. And then when we come back, we won't have a worry in the world. Too late. The Scorpions dig free that night and overturn a train, eating the passengers. Oh, they can. Oh, dude, oh, jeez, this is. Remember that scene from The Fugitive? This is worse. Oh my god, they're gonna eat them like cocktail onions. <laughs> the good news is that the smorgasbord incites a bloodlust wherein the black scorpion kills all the others. The bad news is that it next heads for Mexico City. KMEX Mexican Radio. The express train from Monterey has been derailed outside of Mexico City. Doesn't anybody speak Spanish here in Mexico? No, they do not speak Spanish in Mexico. Attention, population of Mexico, run from the scorpions from Big Big Saving. Here I am. Where is the scorpion? We've lost it in the hills, ten miles out of town, but it's approaching the northwest area of the capital. Vincente Price, right? <laughs> How did we get to Paris? The one day without a soccer game. The army uses a truckload of cattle meat to draw the beast to the stadium, where they engage it in battle. The, the shot establishes they called the army, the Salvation Army, <laughs> and a guy who owned a bulldozer. Remember the white area on the throat. What is a throat? There it is. The scorpion trashes troops, tanks, tractors, and even helicopters before the geologists finally shoot an electric tether into its weak point and send it into convulsions. You missed! I won't miss this time. Here, just grab the... Oh! Turn it off! Get it! I'm get it! Get Come on, it. get it! Yes! I didn't think a scorpion could look surprised. So you want me to switch it on now? You just told me to turn it off. Dead at last, the drooling monster falls silent. <laughs> now you want me to turn it off? Make up your damn mind! <laughs> It closed its <laughs> eyes? <laughs> if we could all meet tomorrow at my laboratory for a recapitulation, Hank. <laughs> Gonna go have sex now. <laughs> One week later, they had a celebratory soccer game, and the rest of the town was destroyed. The film starred Richard Denning, who gives a cheesy stock turn in this monster movie that slogs through 1950s style dialogue in between the monster bits. He gave a better performance in Creature from the Black Lagoon and a few other notable sci-fi and drama movies and TV shows over the years. I'm not saying anything. Hasta la bye bye. <laughs> His love interest was Mara Corday, busty pinup girl, playboy playmate, TV actress, and co-star of schlocktastic flicks like Tarantula and The Giant Claw. You don't have to go away, and that volcano can wait. No. The Mexican co-production meant this was shot on location south of the border with several notable character actors such as Carlos Rivas, many of whom would be seen again together in Beast of the Hollow Mountain, also shot in Mexico. <laughs> Look, Juanita, do me a favor, will you? And just stay out of the way. Yes, Mr. Hank. Good. But its true star power lies in the stop-motion effects created, or at least overseen, by the legendary Willis O'Brien. He and Pete Peterson do a lot with a relatively meager budget, Editing may pad out and reuse many shots of the monsters and tanks, but it doesn't change the impressive, or at least fun, creature effects created for Black Scorpion. 
Word has it that the trapdoor spider and strange clawed giant worm were both rejects from the legendary Lost Spider Pit sequence from Obi's original 1933 King Kong. Those and the multiple scorpion models taking on trains, eating people, and battling each other are what make this strange adventure such a wild ride. Black Scorpion is certainly a lot more exciting than many of the other similar films of the era. And welcome back to oh, Raiders hello. of the Lost Genre with your hosts, Doc and Dave. Jim, what is this called? The Black Scorpion. The Black Scorpion. They now, only say it like ten times in the movie. This is the one movie I came to, I said, you know what, Dave, let's stop expecting things. Because mm. that always ends up in failure. So I didn't expect anything. You hadn't even seen the MST3K episode of it? Negative. Really? This is my first time ever. See, I... I Totally just went into this assuming that you had at least seen the Misty episode. Negative. Wow. This, I didn't even know this movie existed until I saw I, it. I your took your table. Black Scorpion virginity today. It was surprisingly good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, you, I think the it, movie or me taking your virginity? Uh, both. Yeah, okay, good. Surprising <laughs> in both accounts. But for this movie, I was... Okay, so when we, like the first whatever, I have a few gripes, not very many. Right. Like the black scorpion, so I expected a giant scorpion to come cause some shenanigans, but we got a lot. Mm. So that made up for one of my shenanigans. Meaning problems. a lot of scorpions. A lot of scorpions. Yeah. Dozens of them. You're right. It almost, okay, so the reused footage, an issue. Yes. Gee. Yeah. Uh, granted, this is, granted, this is, I mean, this is one of those cases where it's like, okay, we only have so much money for special effects, or only so many time, but we'll fix it in editing. I mean, you could reverse the shot at least. Right, and the thing was, like, all the reused shots needn't have been. Mm. It one or two possibly, yeah. like the ones that were reused, fine. But it just felt like that that was unnecessary yeah. padding. It's not even just with oh, the scorpion footage. We, we we saw several other scenes that with just like people, trains, like, people, yeah. scorpions, cars, yeah. j jungle. <laughs> like, in whatever. In Mexican like, jungle. Yes, the Mexican jungle, the classic Mexican jungle right. everybody lives in. Why ever, the reason everybody goes to Rocky Point, right? Yeah, I go, hey, take me to the part of Mexico where that huge waterfall is surrounded by palm trees. <laughs> but they establish over and over and over and over and over again, they almost never leave Mexico City. So it right. has you're to either, be You're either the volcano distance. or 20 miles right. away from, right. Even though that village was nowhere near civilization, no. you're only 20 miles Somehow. from Mexico City. And whatever other garbage It's a good happens. thing that there was a white missionary, though. Oh, to teach them all English? To teach, yeah. He all literally of them. hit everybody in the country. I know, especially the especially the guy on the on the police radio. Oh my God! Do you read me, Sergeant Vega? Do you read me? This is headquarters calling five one one. <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, aside from all the whitewashing, that's totally fine. That was just expected. Yeah. All the characters were serviceable. Yes. Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, second scientist was a little yeah. less. I don't know, scientists. man. I, I mean, he's just there. He's, again, he's padding. Our main character, uh, he's just so affable. Mm -hmm. Like, like too affable. And finally, uh, I oh, wait, this does bring up a good point, though. Okay. There comes a point where the kid finally fucking disappears. Yes! <laughs> like, that, that's another problem with the movie. Yeah. The kid, the reoccurring kid. Yeah. Like, we, I get... Uh, it's I'm a gonna, template for all the gamma films. Right. It's, it's padding, though. In this yeah. movie, the padding stuck out like a sore thumb. It was a, a nice sandwich, but the bread was white bread, you know? <laughs> that's the thing. Like, the meat was good. Like, the, the special effects were good. The visual effects, all the stop motion stuff, all the little Gumby scenes. Yeah. Adorable and it, or... So, so you're saying white bread, but good... Good Mexican spices. Good meat, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, it was carne asada all throughout. It was great! Because the close-ups of the scorpions are dreadfully slow. Which is where the, you can tell the editor, like, fucks things up and saves the day at the same time. It's, all these movies, movies like this, a, a film that we probably will not watch on the show because it doesn't quite fit the parameters mm. is Them. Have you ever seen Them? I have not. Them is an amazing flick, and that is the movie that I really feel James Cameron lifted the template for to make Aliens. So everybody else is making a cheap version of yeah. Them. So let's, let, you talk about that, let's talk about origins. Mm. We don't know where the scorpions came from. There's right, a they volcano, just, they just live underground. Yeah, they just appear to have been underground, gigantic, prehistoric scorpions that are released by a volcanic explosion. And 
and that's it. That's that's the that's all we get. The namesake of our show was touched upon for a brief moment. Right, and we that's got it. to a lost world, and then it became... and saw two other lost species. Yeah, three, I think. Because I see, well, you I'm see not the giant worm the... with the claws. Yeah, I'm not counting the scorpion as one. Right, we'll and the giant spider thing. Oh yeah, the mite. Yeah. Yeah. So four. Yeah. The reason that those are in there, the legend is. Um, there's a whole sequence shot for the original King Kong where mm -hmm. after the log scene where Kong bats everybody off the log, they all fall into a pit and they're all attacked by giant insects including a giant spider mite thing and a mm -hmm. giant worm and so on. And then that scene was like so horrific that they cut it out of the film and nobody's ever seen it since. <sighs> and for a long time it was like a legend. They, they didn't even know if it had been shot. But then you have Black Scorpion and there are the monsters created for it right there. Yeah, it does feel like, and that makes sense. Well, that was shot in Mexico. I mean, like, you have a couple, uh, you have a few of these movies where it was, like, made during that time of the same reason why they made... Um, yeah, the three... Right, 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 three caballeros. Yeah. Uh, the, the same reason those were made is it's like, it's like oh, we're, we're fostering a good neighbor policy, so we're going to give each other tax kickbacks to make movies um, in each other's country. So, so yeah. you, have a, you have a B cast in a you know on b-roll footage shot in a b location i get it but that's that's it was just so ham-fisted yeah that being said i mean you know it's a cash in compared to compared mm. to them um but so if you're gonna, yeah exactly and that's just it if you're gonna cash in get somebody but you're not gonna do it with as much budget oh well we'll do it with stop motion there's one unforgivable thing it does the, the fake ending in the middle oh like you, you really? Yeah, because I, I expected this because this movie was so bad and it already felt full feature length. Right. That when they blow up the whole. That was to be fair. That was one hour in, and right. technically you could end it there. Not too many movies end at the hour mark. Right. It just the... it already felt like an hour yeah. and a half to yeah. me. Yeah. Like, Packs a um, lot into that last. You know, after that though, it's oh, like, yeah. It's like hey, but... Mara Corte in a hot dress. Oh, by the way, more giant scorpions and a giant attack on Mexico City. Right. It's here's the problem though. This movie oh, could and, have been and train attack. That was. That oh was yeah, crazy. the train attack was cool, but yeah. that's the thing. Again, with the pacing, like yeah. we're cutting back and forth, it's like a snail's pace. Back to a rocket, back to a snail. And so I just felt a little like, ugh, like my neck literally hurts from watching this movie. <laughs> but now that you know, are you going to feel the same way about it when you watch it the second time? And you're like, probably not. Right? And your wife's sitting there and she's like, oh, that's it. And you're going to be like, no. Oh, no. Yeah, you have to watch it again and forget about all the parts that suck. <laughs> <laughs> still, still better than, you know, giant grasshoppers right. literally photographed on a piece of paper that happens to be a photograph of a building. But this feels like that part of the Right, movie, by the time you get to the 50s, you kind of expect better, and that's where Ray Harryhausen comes Well, not even that. Just in. like, the, it just feels like we're going along the part of the movie, and then we see the multiple layers. Yeah. So we have the kid running, the right. mite, <laughs> and then our people reacting to various degrees of yeah, it quality loses of that footage. Depth, yeah, it loses, yeah. And so yeah. it should be a smooth ride, but yeah. then it just feels like it gains a third dimension and pops out a yeah. couple of times, and you're like, what the hell is no, it's going fine. on? It's fine, it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a wooden roller coaster. Like back in the day, you couldn't complain because there was nothing else. You know what? That's a, I, I, like that, I like that analogy, a wooden roller coaster, because it's old, but it's fun. It beats the hell out yeah. of you. To... This is a real beating to the kidneys. Yeah. <laughs> but it's fun. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's the cyclone. <laughs> it, it's six flags. Right. That's a good analogy. I like that. All right. So how many sheep does Dave give Black Scorpion? I mean, this was so good <laughs> that it's probably a nine. Wow. Like, the, nine the dialogue. Sheep. Yeah. Because if, so the fact that it keeps you going and then the fake ending, even though it was like, Frustrating at the time. Yeah. In hindsight, I can see how that would be a fun diversion. So yeah, it's like probably a nine. Wow. Nine sheep based on the criteria for this show sure, alone. Sure, sure, sure. I'll give you that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I give it. Um, I give it seven and a half to eight sheep. Okay. Um, just because I know some of the amazing stuff that you know is out there, but also that this is at least really good for what it is. It, right. It's a good wooden roller coaster. That's right. Like, this. So if I had to cut a sheep in half. All right, yeah. so that's Black Scorpion, and the rain stops. So here, yeah. So I guess it's time to do. I don't know. Don't worry, Dave. I've got something for you. To do. All right. Yeah. You're right, Scott. This was a way better idea.